So I'm just going to quickly explain and get into um, explaining a data structure known as a set. Sets differ from lists and they also differ from tuples and I'll show you first off how to make one. So set one equals one, seven and hello. Okay. We can actually add any data type to a set but we can't add a data structure to a set. Now you can add items to a set um, but a set may not contain more than one of an item so it cannot have duplicates unlike a list or a tuple you just can't change the tuple once you've made it you can change a set once you've made it but you can't so for example i can you i can try to add seven but this will still only contain one seven this set uh, the other thing i can't add is other data structure so i can't add a list to a set and i also can't add a tuple or a dictionary to a set i haven't got into dictionaries yet but i will later on so first off, I'll show you how to add. So we use set one dot add. Notice that we use dot add and we don't use uh, dot append like we did before. I'm just going to get a print statement ready for this set, so we can print it and confirm that it does indeed carry those values. And we're going to add one, add eight to the set here. And if I print this, you'll see it's got eight, one, hello, and seven. Now, let's see if I try and add 8 once again what happens. There's still only one 8 in the set, you see that? Let's try and add 8 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you can see that without doubt I have added the number 8 several times to this set. And if I print the set, it's only in the set once. So this is basically me just showing that you cannot put... Uh, duplicate values in a set. Another thing I can't add to a set is a list. So let's just put an add list one. Now I need to make list one first before I can add it. So list one equals nine, eight, twenty-three, for example. Now let's just initiate that. And if I try to add the list to the set. It won't actually work. It's uh, given me an un unhashable type, apparently. Now let's add a tuple. Tuple 1 equals 3, 4, 5, we'll say. And let's see if we can add a tuple to it. So set one dot add tuple 1. It will let us add a tuple. Interestingly enough, but it, it just won't let us add a, uh, a list. It's an unhashable type list. See that? So if I print set one, we actually have the tuple, that's fine, but we cannot add a list. And I'm not sure if we can add a dictionary or not, but I'm not looking to find out. Probably not because of the the actual uh, the value side. But anyway, th th that doesn't really matter so much to me. Another thing we can do is pop the uh, set so this will get rid of an arbitrary item in the set so dot pop will also tell us i think it should return what it's actually got rid of so it gets rid of one got rid of the first item there so if we print if we print set one there's no one now if we pop again it'll probably get rid of seven so it gets rid of the first item yeah, we pop again, it'll get rid of 8. And now this should only be hello and 3, 4, and 5. We'll just empty that set now. So set 1 shouldn't contain anything because we popped everything out of it. Okay. Now I'm going to um, make set 1 into that. 1, 7, and hello. Another thing we can do in this set is we can remove items from the set. So we can do set one dot remove and we can remove one should we say now if we try to use this twice it comes up with an error so if you use remove to remove an item that's not inside of the set because this one is no longer inside the set it will actually produce an error so if you want to remove an item from a set 
I suggest that you actually use set one or the set name and you use the discard function. Okay. Uh, the reason I recommend you use the discard function is because the discard function does exactly the same, but if the item isn't in the set, it doesn't produce an error. Okay. So let's discard seven just to prove it, just to prove that, that will get rid of the seven. And if I print the set again, it's just hello. And now me discarding over and over again doesn't produce an error. It just um, it just allows me to do that, even though there's nothing to discard, without producing some kind of weird error. So that's quite nice there. Now I'm going to make set 2 equal to just whatever, really. doesn't matter so much to me. 9, uh, 62, 33, and then a string happy underscore days with a Z. I'll put an S for those who don't um, actually speak good English so that they don't get confused. And let's print that. So print set two. And you'll find that that's worked. And what we'll do is we'll get rid of everything in this set. So set two dot clear. And this dot clear gets rid of everything within a set in the same way that I think dot clear works in other and you see this how it actually just gives you a set here that's what it is it's just a set it's an empty set this here shows an empty set something cool I can do is I can use this keyword set and inside of it I can put the list one argument and this will make a set of this one. So set three is equal to set of list one. And then if I print that, set three, I'll end up with all of these values here. Okay. Now, because sets are only allowed to have um, one of each value, they're not allowed to contain duplicates. Even though I can do this, I can make something with several of the same number. See how it's got several 99s, several 9s, several 4s there? So if I run this, it will run. You see that there? It will run. So I can, I can actually make a set. I can assign a set to have multiple of the same item. But when I print that set... It will actually only have one of each of those items. So it doesn't matter if I mess up the assignment and put a few duplicate values in there because the set itself, when once created, the variable will only hold three, uh, three distinct, several distinct values. It will not allow any duplicates at creation. So you don't have to worry about that. I think you can actually copy it. I can't remember. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to... Do that. Set for not dot copy is equal to copy of set for. I'm not entirely sure if this works actually. Probably doesn't. Copy. Um, no, probably not then. Um, I don't know. Set for dot copy like this. Does it work? I don't really know. It pro probably doesn't. No. Oh, maybe it does. I'll try it. Let's see. Yes, so set 5 is an exact copy of set 4. So by using the set, the dot notation and copy and assigning that to a variable, you can copy a set like so. Now, I'm going to show you something a little bit strange uh, with Boolean values. Uh, a while back, I was messing around with Boolean values and realized that they had the value of 1 or 0 depending on their false, whether they are false or true. So bool one equals true and therefore has a value of one bool val two equals false and therefore has a value of zero okay just in general you won't need to worry about this. However, it will matter when you're making sets. So let's say that set six is equal to one false 
and true. When I print set six here, I only get false one and one. I don't get true. The reason I don't get true is because true actually has a value of one and we already have a value of one here um, in our set. So true doesn't actually get contained in the set because it's actually one is a duplicate of the value true. Weirdly enough. Now this won't really matter as I say for most calculations. But it does matter for sets. And here. When I print the value true and 1. When I put it in this order. Because we assign the value true first. And the value true actually has a numerical value of 1. The value 1 is not actually put into the set. Because it's technically a duplicate. Even though false and true have different applications to 1 and 0. Um, they're seen in the same way by a set because they have the same value in a set. So that's just a bit of trivia there uh, that you can play around with. It's not really very useful to anything but sets. Uh, it probably won't even be useful in sets, but you never know, it could be. So just bear that in mind and you know, always be careful with these sets. Anyways, thanks for watching and that's about it.